So today I decided to dabble with graph databases, specifically Neo4j. Why, you might ask? Because I think it's useful, and it's a necessary stepping stone for my master plan to build an agent with a memory. In this video, I am going to show you three aspects of graph databases that are unique. First of all, they are intuitive. You'll see why in just a second. Second, they are easy to use, given you use them in the right context. Lastly, it's maybe the most visual database. 1. Intuition Graph databases allow you to store information that grow organically, as opposed to a SQL database where you have to predefine the data format and stick to it, whereas back in the graph land, you can just decide to connect a piece of data to existing data and it doesn't break anything. As my father always used to say, no schema, no problem. I think that feels much closer to how our brain works. You can have a somehow disorganized understanding of the world and you come across a piece of information and you just add it and connect it to what you already know. Also, did you know that graph databases can be used with LLMs for RAG, that's Retrieval Augmented Generation? That's not to say other databases can't. You can absolutely make RAG with any kind of database. You can even RAG with a TXT file, but let's be real. That's like using a spoon to dig a tunnel. Too easy. Speaking of right tool for the job, graph databases give a bunch of tools to measure different qualities of a graph, like shortest paths, all paths between nodes, communities, important nodes, connector nodes, ranking of nodes, and most importantly, visualization. 3. Visual What better way to illustrate how intuitive this can be than to show you a social network? Now, if you were to store a social network in a SQL database and wanted to get rich structural information about it, you can. But it's just not the right tool. So in this example, I mapped out the key AI players and influencers of 2024. If I were to verbally describe all of this, it would take a long time and it still wouldn't be as clear as this. Now that we have this database, let's talk about extracting some information out of it. One thing I have to mention now is this. This data came from Wikipedia, and I used AI to parse out all the information. Both the data source and the collection method introduced some quirks into the database. For example, Donald Trump, Barack Obama are some of the politicians in the database that I didn't think belonged there. However, it turns out that billionaires either support or invest into politicians, or sometimes oppose them. And these politicians show up time and again. Next, billionaires end up being the most important. I think it makes sense because of the money and influence they have on everyone. Board members of companies such as OpenAI show up quite frequently. I think that makes sense since they control the direction of the company. Now let's talk about bias. This is a relatively small database. As such, it has biases. I tried to make it as unbiased as possible. But unless you ingest everyone in Silicon Valley, there's going to be some bias in it. And I am limited by the amount of money I have, so this is all that I could do. It was between eating my two packs of ramen and adding more nodes, and I chose the ramen. I started off by entering the founders and CEOs of the $6 trillion companies. Meta, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, and now NVIDIA. Interestingly enough, all of these companies are all in on AI. Then I entered people that Time Magazine considers are the most important players in AI in 2024. Then after that, I used the people in the database to enter more people. In essence, just expanded the existing networks. Interesting insights. So the important types of people that appear in the list are essentially billionaires, founders, investors, politicians, CEOs, board members, researchers, engineers, rarely sometimes, management people. Next, I wanted to group people into different clusters and found interesting groupings. Because this is not just graph database, it's actually a full-blown conspiracy theory generator. There's Elon Musk and Peter Thiel camp. I don't know, if they actually are in the same camp, I don't think so. But they do know a lot of the same people. There's Reid Hoffman camp, there's Mark Zuckerberg camp, Mark Andreessen camp, Sergey Brin and Larry Page camp, science camp. This one is interesting. It would be interesting to dig deeper just within this network. 
Bill Gates camp, Sam Altman camp, OpenAI camp, Netflix camp, East Coast camp. Again, kind of interesting to see people like Alan Greenspan, Janet Yellen, Ben Bernanke, Winklevosses, and Larry Summers, Apple camp, Jeff Bezos camp, Demis Hassabis camp, NVIDIA, and AMD camp. An interesting thing to do here might be to analyze each community by itself. As well as finding the similarity between subnetworks. For example, how similar is OpenAI network to Sam Altman network? It should be more similar than OpenAI network and Mark Zuckerberg camp. Now let's play a game. It's called WWW or Who Would Win? Not to be confused with World Wide Web or WWE. This is essentially a fantasy football for nerds. Basically, we match two people and see who would win, according to the graph database. The idea is pitting influential tech figures against each other based on their graph ranking, as if there's a secret tech gladiator arena. The question in the back of my mind is, is success all about who you know? Because when you and your billionaire homies are fighting each other, it's not really about money. Because everyone has money. Money on both sides cancel out. So let's face off different people against each other and see who wins, more specifically who the graph says should win. One tech rivalry from most recent memory is Ilya Sutskever and Sam Altman. In the right corner, weighing in at 140 pounds with a node ranking of 22, is Sam Altman. In the left corner, with an IQ of 140 and a node ranking of 15, is Ilya Sutskever. 22 beats 15, so Sam Altman wins. Another unexpected tech rivalry has been Larry Page and Sergey Brin, with respective scores of 16 and 13, and that is a win for Larry Page. Anyway, for the first five people, I feel like they would win against almost anyone, and these top five are Peter Thiel, Elon Musk, Sam Altman, Reid Hoffman, Mark Zuckerberg. What would be interesting is what if they fought each other? Well, Elon is suing Sam Altman, and they have scores of 22.6 for Elon, and 22.09 for Sam Altman. This database is small and speculative, so Finish who knows you. if it actually has predictive powers. But here's something interesting. This is an early interview of Sam Altman by his brother Jack Altman. Here he details how he thinks about influence and favors. Um, whenever I've helped people for, for no immediate benefit uh, and with no intention of ever getting a benefit at all, uh, time and again in my career it has really later benefited me a lot. So I think uh, you at some point often get to a point in your career where you're, you're limited by how many good people you know and, and how many of those you can work with or get to do things that uh, uh, together. And so find, just helping a lot of people and spending a lot of time with a lot of people uh, has benefited me. You know, Years after I really help someone for no reason, I get to invest in their startup and it goes on to be a huge success. Uh, or we're able to like work on OpenAI together, any number of things. Anyway, that's it for a brief introduction to graph databases. In the next video, I will dabble with vector dbs like pinecone or maybe even pgvector. Till then, experiment like there's no tomorrow.